Hello everyone and welcome to my video. If you are new here, my name is Marcin and on this channel I do Photoshop and retouching tutorials and today I want to talk about Channel Mixer. Channel Mixer is probably most misunderstood adjustment layer out there and maybe it's most underrated adjustment layer but after today's video I believe this is going to change. So I have this weird image in front of me. It has three colors. It has red, green, and blue. It's because it's really easy to explain it this way. So let's just jump right to it. I'm going to open Channel Mixer and start explaining. So we have three output channels here. Uh, channel red, green, and blue. The same as the colors on the image. So with the output channel red, we'll be working with the red light, as always, green, green light, and blue is blue light. So as we know, we know that all of these sliders here are related to the red light. And then the second part, each of this slider separately is representing the color of the pixels. So the first slider rep represents the red pixels, green slider represent the green pixels, and blue slider represent the blue pixels. So let's move it. Let's see how does it work. I'm going to start with red slider. So I'm going to work on the red pixels and I will be manipulate with the red light because we work in the channel red. So when I'm going to go up, I'm adding the red light to the red pixels and this red square become very bright because that's what happened when you add the light. When I will take away, go down, when I'm taking away the red light from the red pixels, you can see it become invisible. Why it become invisible? Because if the color doesn't have light, we can't see it. So let's go back to 100%. Then the second slider. So we're still working with the red light, but this time on the green pixels. So on this green square. What's happened? What's gonna happen? As you can see, as we add the red light, the green pixels is turning yellow because when we connect these two colors, we receive other color based of these two colors. And when we're gonna go down, we're gonna just have the same green. So the last blue square, when we add the red light, it will turn purple and later on a uh, very strong pink, I would say. Okay, so we have the red light covered. Let's go back to other channel. Now we're working with the green light. Add the green light to the green, pixels and we have brighter green, take it away, it will become invisible just the same way as it happened with the red before. Add the green light to the red pixels, it will become kind of yellow and then actually we get this very strong something close to the green. So go back to zero and the same, add red, um, I'm sorry, green light to the blue pixels and we will receive color that is similar to the cyan. And the last channel, blue, and it will be working just the same. So bright blue, take away the blue. When we add to greens, it will change the color. And when we add to red pixels, it will also change the color similar way as when we are adding red light to the blue pixels. So these colors are actually related once we mix them. So go back to zero. On the bottom, we have another slider, which is called constant. And constant is basically working with the certain light that if we work with the red channel, we will be adding the red light to all of the pixels. So at some point, as you can see, it gets so bright that the red that covered the background 
will turn into the red the same as the square here because the square is also getting brighter and once the brightness of everything as is at 100 we cannot distinguish these two so going down uh, worth to mention these all colors are at 50 percent luminosity so when i go minus 50 percent it's completely dark and the same thing will happen if i'm going to work with the other colors as you can see same thing but different color depending on the channel I'm going to work. The last thing is this option monochrome. I don't think it's used often, but if uh, we would turn the image this way to black and white, it's giving us great possibilities to manipulate with the light on the each color, as you can see, depending on the slider we are going to use. and same with the constant we add or take away the light now i believe we know very well how the channel mixer works so let's try to do something on real life example i'm moving to another project and i have this image for the help i still have the colors here so i can see how they change depending on how i work with channel mixer so i'm going to open channel mixer and I choose these neon lights because actually the channel mixer is perfect when it comes to working with night images. So starting with the red, let's have a look what we have here. Uh, we have skin tones that will have a lot of red light and some other lights. So we can predict what will happen if we are going to take it away. So when we take it away, the image will be excluded of the red light on all of the red pixels existing on the image. So we will receive the image that will be very cold. And when we go opposite to the blue channel and let's take away the blue light from the blue pixels. And what you can see, the image overall got warmer because we don't have the blue light which is of course cold. And we are left with only two colors right now with the color green and red. So let's see what will happen when we go to the green channel and take away completely the green light from the green pixels. We are left with only red. And of course you will know what will happen if once again, I will take away the red light from the red pixels. We'll have nothing. So that was the perfect image actually to show how the channel mixer work because we can easily distinguish these three major different colors. So uh, let's go back to the right values. And the thing I need to mention is when you're going to work on your images, it's important to pay attention to this total value of the lights. If you don't want to change the light values, you need to make sure that you keep the total at 100%. If you go below that, your image overall will have less light, so will be getting darker. If you will go over that, your image will be getting more light, so it will be coming it will be becoming brighter. So it's important to keep attention to it if you don't plan on changing the light values. So now uh, let's do um, something simple. Let's try to manipulate with the lights, preserving the right amount of the total light value. So what I want to do is a very subtle adjustment. I will take away a little bit of the red light from the red pixels. I think it was a little bit strong over here and add equally to other pixels. When it comes to the green, let's see how it will come out. I will take away a little bit of the green light from the green pixels and I will add it to the red pixels. So as you can see, the skin will become more yellowish. And now let's go to the blue. Let's see how it looks. We take down 
maybe 30% from the blue pixels and let's see where it's actually suit otherwise. So maybe green and let's try with red, something like this. So as you can see, the change is really settled. I wanted to do it to show you that we actually did not change the total value of the light on the image, but the outcome is different because we manipulated with the values of each of the lights. So right now, let's uh, reset that and do something uh, much different. So let's completely reverse the colors existing on the image. So I'm going to remove completely the red light from the red pixels and add equal values to other lights. What I'm going to do with uh, green lights, I'm going to take it away from the green pixels and add 50% to other remaining pixels and the same with the blue. And you will see the interesting result, what happened now. We completely reverse the colors that were on this image. Have a look. Red become cyan and the same with the skin tones completely reversed so then when it comes to the green it turned kind of purple uh, similar to magenta and when it comes to the blue it also got opposite color which is this uh, weirdly looking yellow tones so this is something very extreme and i don't advise doing it but it will show you the full potential of the channel mixer. And channel mixer is great not only for photography, but it's also great for the design. As you can see, it's really powerful adjustment layer. So thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial made it clear for you how channel mixer works. On a daily basis, I work in the retouching business and this is what I mainly teach as well. So if you are interested in professional non-destructive retouching techniques, I want to invite you to my website retouchingninja.com. There is a free retouching essential course. So if you want to learn uh, retouching, if you're looking for the way to start, I believe this free course will be something for you. Of course, links are in the description, link to my website, link to my portfolio and link to this free course. Once again, thank you for watching and hope to see you soon again in the next Photoshop tutorial.